running tired and broken and scared But I swear I'll never give up the fight I see you broken and beat Head pulled down over your eyes Every part of you wants to surrender Darling, you were meant to survive With every star We are born again Open your heart Spend less time in your head Down. 
Cause the future, the future is now Not backing down Cause the future is now
Welcome to church. Happy Mother's Day weekend, Free Grace United. I am so excited that you are joining us today. I'm also very excited to introduce to you our special guest this weekend. This is Sunday Burquest. She is a friend of mine over recent years. Um, her story is that she competed on CBS as Survivor, and she also is a breast cancer survivor, and she's a mom, and she has boys. Um, so she's got a lot of life experience, and we originally had planned for Sunday to come in and do our twirl event this weekend, and then uh, Mother's Day, we couldn't gather for twirl, but she's local, so we were able to get her in to record for Mother's Day. Um, so we are just super excited about what's going to happen today. So as we get started, we just want to invite you to nominate a mom to get a special gift box sent to her house. We have a couple of things here. Um, we have my book, How to Twirl. We have Sunday's book, Grit Girl. And we have some custom jewelry. And we'd love to send out a little bit of uh, some treat boxes to a few moms. So you can text the word, it's not really a word, we invented it, mom nom, which means a mom you wanna nominate. You'll see it on your screen, mom nom to 24587 and you'll get a link to nominate a mom to get a special gift box sent to her house. And so if you wanna just nominate, you can nominate as many moms as you want. We're just gonna do random drawings and we'll let everybody know on Monday who won those. Uh, Sunday, you wanna tell us a little bit about your book and a little bit about who you are and your uh, just brief story so they know what it is they're nominating somebody to win. Okay. My name is Sunday, like you said, I am a breast cancer survivor, but many other things like everybody else been through a lot of things. And I feel like I finally came to the place where I realized that my strength really just came from the Lord and I call that strength grit. So this book is about finding your grit, kind of how I found mine and still discovering mine. And um, I just know it'll, it'll help because it'll relate on a lot of different levels to a lot of different people. Very cool. So we are excited to give away some copies of Grit Girl, How to Twirl. Mine sounds super girly and yours sounds like, Rah! It's a good mix. You know, it is a good it's mix. It's a good mix. <laughs> Although you're looking sparklier and girlier than me, I think, today. Look at your fancy mm -hmm. bling. Oh. oh. Hmm. Yeah. How about so anyway. those shoes, though? You got yes. bling on Can your you shoes. Can you see my shoes? Woo! Those are awesome There you go. <laughs> those are <laughs> <Thank> awesome. <you. laughs> um, so we're going to jump into a time of worship now together. Um, we're starting with one of my favorite songs. Um, we have Jamie leading us, so gather your family around. Uh, make sure you snag some communion supplies, maybe a little bit of juice, some crackers, 
Uh, Pastor Eric's going to lead us in communion in a few minutes, but uh, we're going to move into a time of worship. So I'm going to take a second to pray and then we'll do that. Father God, thank you so much that we can gather from all over the world um, in honor of you. And thank you for uh, all the women that are being honored this weekend. And I just pray that as we go through this service that you'll speak to each life specifically and individually because you are a very personal God. And we just give you the glory and the honor and the praise for you are good in Jesus' name. Amen.
again, church, if you are just joining us today, um, we have a special guest with us today, Sunday Burquest. Sunday's a breast cancer survivor, but she's also a survivor survivor. Um, she competed on the reality TV show Survivor. And so I just wanted to give you a chance to just tell us a little bit about like your season and what your experience was like. This is just kind of a chance to get to know you a little bit. I mean, <laughs> there are some super fans. Like there are some super fans who are watching this right now. And so I know everybody wants to hear, get little tidbits about what that was like. So yeah, just share. All right. What I'll season just... were you on? And Okay, I was on season 33, which is Millennials versus Gen X. And the interesting thing is they don't tell you what the theme of the show is until you actually get on the beach and start playing the game. So I had no idea I that did not was the know theme that. of the show. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. So you're a millennial? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, what's interesting is at the time, which is one of the reasons I know I was chosen for the show, is I was working full time with young adults. And of course, I didn't know the theme, but it fit perfectly. And I think part of it was also my breast cancer story. Um, so I get on the beach and it's the game is starting and you're, you're like, there's hundreds of cameras and I can't believe I'm here. I'm on the beach and there's Jeff Rose. There's no music, you know, and it's just a surreal, surreal feeling. Um, you didn't walk around with your own theme music? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just assume everybody can yes, hear the music yeah. all the time. It's dramatic. Yeah, it's Some so people. weird. Ah. And it's so weird to see a wall of cameras yeah. that you never ever see when you're watching the show. They're, they're so good at what they do. Oh. Um, but as I navigated the game, I realized pretty quickly I was playing two games. I was playing Survivor, of course, and I wanted to win a million dollars. But secondly, I was playing the game as a Christian and I was playing against my own self in the sense that I felt strongly that I wanted to so badly represent Jesus in a good way. And I'll uh, take you a little bit back in the casting process. You go through a series of interviews and I had an interview with Jeff uh, Probst, the host of the show, for those of you who don't know. And at the end of the interview, I did not plan this, but I looked at Jeff and I said, Jeff, I gotta tell you something. And he's like, what? He said, the Christians you have on this show, they're weird. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, they are weird. Why are they weird? And I go, I don't know, but I'm gonna tell you something right now, Jeff. I'm not gonna be a weird Christian. <laughs> and I said, and furthermore, I'm not even gonna have to tell anybody I'm a Christian. They're gonna know. And I got a little like, yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> you know, that, you know, they don't expect it. So I was playing the game to not be a weird Christian. <laughs> and it's a different game than what other people are playing, you know? So yeah. I had to adjust quickly to realize that I lived in a little bit of a bubble. Mm. I worked full time in a church. My kids were in a Christian school. That was all of my friends, all of my kids' sports. And I quickly realized I was never with those that didn't know the Lord. Yeah. And that wasn't a good thing, yeah. in my opinion. So I was navigating this and um, I felt like the Lord really helped me to just do my best to be kind and be a servant. I think sometimes we make it overly difficult. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm playing the game, it is real. Everything is real. Um, in fact, when I got called and told I was accepted on the show, I went home that night and I sat on my front, front porch and I started bawling. What was I thinking? I can't go on Survivor. <laughs> I'm not fast, I'm not strong, I'm not athletic. <laughs> what was I thinking? And immediately I, I felt this verse on the inside that got me through the game, honestly. And it's in 2 Timothy 4.17 and it said, The Lord stood by me. He gave me strength so that through me the message of the gospel may be heard by the Gentiles. Ooh, that's good. And as I walked into these challenges, which are so overwhelming and huge and intimidating, yeah. <laughs> and I'm me, 45 year old mom with, <laughs> you know, all my scars and extra weight and all that stuff. And I would just say, the Lord's standing by me. He's giving me strength. And each challenge I approached with, um, go as fast as I can before I'm afraid and talk myself out of it. <laughs> <laughs> so if I have to jump off something, jump as fast as I can so I don't get afraid and stop. And um, you know, there's no toothpaste and no toothbrushes and no razors and no toilet paper and no anything. I'm sorry, there's no toilet paper? No. So it's just like now? Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> exactly the same. <laughs> nothing different. It just brought me right back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, no wow. toilet paper, nothing. You know, things you don't think of like towels. Yeah. You know, after you're in the ocean, you, you like to 
have a towel after you're wet. Yeah, no. Yeah. And um, just really, really interesting. The, the Really the living conditions I discovered were the least difficult part of the game. It was being with people 24-7. Yeah. And I'm not with my kids that much, or my husband, I'm not with 24-7. Yeah. And you're with people all the time, but at the same exact time, you're 100% alone because mm -hmm. everyone's trying to win a million dollars. Yeah. And hopefully in your everyday life, you don't have to worry about every conversation and every who's lying to me and who's not lying to me and why did they roll their eyes and why are they whispering? And it takes a huge mental toll yeah. on you, aside from leaving your family for seven weeks with zero contact. Yeah. Um, but I will say, I truly believe God put the desire in me to want to be on that show. And I've had people, I can hear people, why would God use a reality TV show? And my response is, well, why wouldn't he? Right. There's a lot of Survivor fans that don't know the Lord yet. So did you have some criticism? I did. Yeah. Um, I had comments like, well, how can you go on that show? All they do is lie. Yeah. Um, what kind of an example are you going to be to the young adults you work with? And I got asked that in casting also. Um, and my answer was simple. When I play the game Sorry with my kids, when they were growing up and they, I landed on their spot, Sorry, you're <laughs> off. It is a game. It's a game. Yeah. And I felt like I had a clear understanding of that. Yeah. Um, and I really felt like the higher principle I was teaching was at 45, it's not too late to go for your dreams. Yeah. And God will use you in any scenario, even a silly reality TV show. Yeah. Now, I think that, well, I mean, you didn't win. That is public knowledge. So you can <laughs> ignore, yes, I, I did not win. <laughs> right. Um, but still, like, being there and doing that, I mean, we normal people look at you <laughs> and we're like, wow, no. you know, you did that. That's amazing. Like, you're the celebrity who was on Survivor. I'm like, I know Sunday Birth West, you know. But the truth is, though, it wasn't all glamorous. And even coming back, you and I, the first time we had lunch and we chatted, you mentioned that it was difficult. Um, because your experience, how you experienced it, and how the show ended up playing out, because it's all produced, you know, you've got, it's all produced, and that came out much later. Like, your experience and what your family ended up seeing, you know, weren't the same. Not that it wasn't truth, it just wasn't the same. And boy, when you said that, I just felt like that seems like a lot of things in life, like what we're experiencing in our own life, in our stories, Sometimes people can misrepresent us. Not that they misrepresented you on the show, it just didn't maybe look like what you thought it was going to. Um, and sometimes in life we get misunderstood, we get misrepresented. And I don't know about you, but my instinct is always to be like, that's not, that's yeah. not me, that's, <laughs> let me set you straight, you know, because I assume everybody really cares <laughs> about me. Well, of course they in do. My life. <laughs> um, so how do you deal with that? How do you deal with, um, your experience and then watching it and and it just being so different how it's perceived how do you justify that in your heart and it was a difficult journey yeah. i will tell you that it wasn't i i will say that these people that produce the show work amazingly hard they have over 500 hours of footage to put in a 42 minute episode sure. and i i kind of liken it to the bible in the sense that every sentence that you as a viewer hears is very on purpose. Mm. Nothing God puts in the Bible is there just because he was filling up the pages, <laughs> he, right? He wasn't trying to hit a word. No, no. no. So <laughs> it's, and it all has to fit a certain storyline. Mm -hmm. But at that, it's a very personal thing. And yeah. I struggled with how could what I felt like I saw be not what I'm seeing on my TV screen every week. For me, the, the overriding issue was if you are a person that loves Survivor and have dreamt of being on the show, for that person, the what you want is the respect that you knew how to play the game. I'm a good player. I don't know that many people got that opinion from watching because if they don't see you doing things, it feels like you weren't doing anything, right? But that's not because you weren't, it's because it didn't end up in the end of the storyline for the winner. So I really had to get to the place where I had to surrender my idea that my identity was in this show. 
which I thought I knew. <laughs> I don't I don't think I'm a celebrity. I don't think I think it's this much of my life. But when it becomes this big thing that you're watching on TV and you have all these comment boards and podcasts, which I had no idea existed. I thought I was a huge fan. I had no idea. So people are saying a lot of things about you yeah. that aren't always pleasant. However, I am going to say this. I felt like I was represented of who I was. The things that were shown of me were often things of me saying things like, are you okay? Can I help you with that? <laughs> and um, because I was really the mom of the season. Yeah. And that's okay with me. I, I don't mind that because that is who I am. And oftentimes it, comments would be made like, wow, that was good gameplay of, of things I would do. And I like, it might help me in the game, but it's really just who I am. Yeah. And um, so it was a hard thing to watch, but it, it is a good life lesson in when things are bad, I can't put my worth in the fact that I'm failing any more than I can when I'm succeeding. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, and God did nice things for me. After the show, uh, There's I've met so many other Survivor players, right? And I've had people say that, um, I've heard comments on podcasts, well, you know Sunday Burquest, everybody knows she's the most positive Survivor player. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so great. And so it's like, it's like, I feel like God's like, look, well, this is what's important. Yeah. I, I was somewhere at a, a, an event, a reality event, and someone came up to me and they said, are you the believer? And I go, yeah, yeah, it's me, it's me, I'm the believer. That oh. should supersede yeah. gameplay respect. Oh, but I God did that. things for me on the island yeah. to show me he was there for me just as much as he did after. That is so good. That is so cool. I think it's um, it's important for us to make connections with people who have been through our unique experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, because there are very I can't I can't bond with you over that because I have no idea. Right. But those people specifically can. Mm -hmm. And you know, we think about this being Mother's Day weekend. I remember when I was a mom of preschoolers, I was part of the Mops group. You know, mom of yeah. preschoolers yeah. group and. There are kind of like these different, as we go through life, it's such an important thing to make sure that we make meaningful connections with people who have been through or are experiencing what we are because you can have that support that you really can't get from anybody else. Other right. people can share hope and encouragement and scripture, but that's why recovery meetings are so important. Mm -hmm. People who are walking through that along with you um, and support groups for various things that we deal with. So. Yeah, we're going to um, return to worship because this is church. I got lost for a minute. I'm like, oh, this is so fun. Uh, but uh, we're going to return to worship. Um, and we have another song. And then we also have Pastor Eric leading us in communion and giving our offering. That'll be up next, as well as Pastor Mike and Brian's kid stuff. And then our annual mom song. So that's all going to be coming up in just a minute. Um, but I was wondering if you want, if you have anything to share, just something special or just a moment where God met you when you were on Survivor, any particular memory of uh, God meeting you there? Yeah, I have a few, but the one that is probably the most meaningful to me is when you go on the show, they have everyone in your family write you a letter. And if you win a re certain reward, you get your letters from home. Now, not every player gets them because only a few people win the reward, but they have every family member write letters. So my family wrote me letters days after I left for the show, okay? Fast forward 21 days into the game, I'm on a reward and I win letters from home. I was getting emotionally depleted by day 21. It was tough. And I would say to the Lord in my heart, all I wanna do is sing, good, good father. And I couldn't remember the words. And I would think, what kind of Christian are you? You can't remember the words to this easy song. <laughs> but it would, I felt like it would be so comforting to me. So day 21 comes, and I get a surprise. I get envelopes with letters from home that my family's written three weeks earlier. And I'm opening my letters, and my daughter, who was 15 at the time, wrote me six pages of Bible verses. And she said, Mom, these scriptures help me. I think they'll help you. But when I turned to the last page, she had written out, all the words to good good father that was three weeks earlier and it was like god saying to me i'm right here mm -hmm. remember that verse you've been saying this whole time the lord stood by me he did that for me three weeks 
prior because he knew I needed it. So good. He just, he has a way of showing us his love. Yeah. So personal. That was a personal way for him to show me that he loved me. Oh, I love that so much. God goes ahead. He has pre-planned the answers to our deepest needs. That's how much he loves us. Wow. Let's return to worship.
still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail. Your promise still stands. Great is Happy fishing opener, I mean, not fishing opener, I mean, happy Mother's Day, everybody! It is, man, man, mothers, I'm hoping you're having a great, great Mother's Day. We love you, we're so grateful for you, and all the fishermen out there, FGU fishing, yeah! Hopefully you're catching a ton of fish on fishing opener. In fact, I took Pastor Ruben and Pastor Brian out for a couple hours in Iowa, because Iowa, the opener's a little earlier, and so we were out fishing for the day. We caught 14. Ruben got one, and Brian got two, and I got 11. It was awesome. It was just a great morning on the water. That got me thinking about scriptures and Mother's Day and fishing opener in Minnesota. And it got me thinking about this verse. This is Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. It just says, he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Do you know what? Fishing is the only biblical sport. It's the only one Jesus did. I mean, Jesus was the ultimate fisherman. He caught more fish than anybody else would ever fish with him. Uh, that, maybe that's why I'm good at it, because, man, I hang out with you. Anyway, just Brian and Ruben, you guys did awesome. But I was thinking about this, this passage of scripture that followers fish. He says, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That God doesn't just forgive your sins. He takes followers, and he teaches them to fish. And that's what I want you to think about with communion this weekend. I want you to think about communion. Think about the fact that there was blood shed for you, and there was a body broken for you. And his body was broken to transform you to fish for men. His blood was shed for you to transform you to fish for men. Followers fish. Everybody say that out loud with me. Wherever you're at, just say, followers fish. Followers fish. This morning, I want you to think of somebody you know who's far from God. Think of somebody who you would love to see them take communion with you sometime. You'd love to see them uh, have the, celebrate Jesus' broken body and his blood shed. You'd love to have them be in the par a part of the fellowship of believers with you. In fact, you got a name in your head, you got a thought, like somebody you know who's far from God, you'd love to see them come to Christ. Right now, as you take communion, what I'd like you to think about is their name and ask God to save their soul. Ask God to use you to save their soul. In fact, just take a second and say, God, use me. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for us. Thank you for sending him to have his body broken and his blood shed. We recognize that we don't just get forgiveness, we become followers and followers fish for men. We ask you to use our lives to help somebody else know who you are. Help us catch tons of people and not just tons of fish. Use us this week in our neighborhoods and uh, in our workplaces and wherever we have an opportunity to go in spite of the lockdown, in spite of all of this stuff, may we bump into somebody and share the gospel and may they receive Christ. Guys, in the last few weeks, I was able to lead somebody to Jesus at a gas station. I was able to lead somebody to Jesus uh, in a warehouse. Just look for open opportunities. Why don't you just take a minute, take communion and say, God, use me. Jesus, thank you for your bloodshed. Drink that with me. Thank you for your body broken. May we be followers who fish. Now I bring up that verse because the purpose of the church is to fish for men. And that leads us into a time to bring an offering. You're gonna notice on the screen some ways that you can give. You can go to uh, freegrace.tv and give. You can use our app to give. You can text the word give to 763-273-8030 and they'll send you back a little link and you can give through that. Or also you can go old school and you can, you can mail in your gift to 829 School Street, Elk River, Minnesota, 55330. So those are your ways to give. But think about why we give. The why we give is because we're fishermen, man. We fish for men. When we bring an offering, we're thinking, God, plant another church in another town. When we, when we bring an offering, we're saying, God, save another life. 
God, when we bring an, when we bring an offering, we're saying, God, can you use this live stream right now? Maybe, maybe you're sharing it. Maybe if you're on Facebook, you're sharing this live stream with somebody else. Maybe they, they come to know Christ. All of that, like we give so that the church can exist, so that we can plant new churches. Hopefully soon the Princeton one's going to finally launch. We were supposed to launch the week that we got shut down. So maybe, 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 maybe very soon Princeton can launch. Guys, we're, we're, we're moving locations right now. We're in the process of building a space in St. Cloud. All of that takes resources. We're, we're moving uh, our St. Paul location, trying to find a new space for them in the middle of all this. We figured it was a good opportunity to move them to a better location. Guys, in all of this, resources are needed so that we can fish effectively. Just like a fisherman has to spend a little money to buy some bait if he's a bait fisherman or buy some flies if he's a fly fisherman or, or, or buy some lures, buy some spinner baits in particular if he's a bass fisherman. For us to actually reach people requires us to have the right lures and the right gear and the right stuff. And so will you please consider taking a second right now and bringing an offering? For those of you that do that every week, I want to tell you thank you. For those of you that do that once in a while, I want to tell you thank you. Each and every one of you matter, whether you're bringing a big gift or small, it all matters because all of us pulling our money together is how we fish for power. Man, I hope you remember today, followers fish. One more time to say, followers fish, followers fish. Now I want to throw to Pastor Mike and Brian as uh, they've got this little moment of awesomeness that uh, they're going to present to us this morning. So kids, time for you to listen up. Mike, Pastor Mike and Brian, take it from here. Kids. I'm Pastor Mike. I'm Pastor Brian. And we're so glad that you were here yet again. We want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mamas in the room. Yes, indeed. In whatever room you're in. Whatever room you're in, we just want you to know that we love you and we care about you. And uh, We thought it'd be fun to do a little um, tribute to Mother's Day Yeah. with a good idea, bad idea, gift idea yeah. during quarantine. Yeah, what you should get, what you shouldn't give to your mothers. Yeah. So... You know, without further ado, check this out. Mommy, I got you some flowers. Beautiful, darling. Mommy, I got you some flowers. Oh, let me put these in something, dear. Happy Mother's Day, I got you chocolate. Oh, Snickers, my favorite. Thanks, son. I got you candy for Mother's Day. Oh, Circus Peanuts, your favorite. Oh, Mom, I made you something. Oh, thank you, dear. It's beautiful. Mom, Mommy, guess what? I got you some confetti. Thanks. Happy Mother's Day, Mom! Oh, thanks, Jimmy! Good job! Mom, guess what I got you for Mother's Day? A vacuum! No, your dad is in big trouble, mister. I made you food, Mom. Mmm, very good, Timmy. Happy Mother's Day! I got you a pot. Oh, how thoughtful. Night-night. Huh. There it is. Yeah. Um, so, you know, no child was harmed in the filming no. process? No, and if we offended you because... You gave your mother dandelions for Mother's Day? We're sorry, but there are weeds. There are weeds. And yeah. uh, don't give your mom circus peanuts. Like, yeah. What is that? That's I not don't even, even know. flavored styrofoam. It's even elephants wouldn't eat them. Yeah, well, anyways. We love you guys. Yeah. We will see you very soon. Soon, soon, soon. soon. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Bye. Hey. 
Hey church, we have a little bit of an annual tradition around here, around Mother's Day. We like to put a little song together just to say thank you to all the moms for all the amazing things you do. And we know that the stay-at-home order is maybe causing a little extra tension. And uh, so we just wanted to, to extend a little bit of an olive branch and say we understand that sometimes it might sound a little bit like this. gosh, don't you just love that? Something to cry about. I mean, ask, did your mom say that to you when you were a kid? If you don't stop crying, I'm going to give you something yes, to cry about. Absolutely. <laughs> it sounded really harsh, but we thought maybe if we shared some funny videos during it, it wouldn't be like, I'll give you something to cry about. Oh my gosh. And Jamie, Jamie's voice just, whew. I think I secretly picked that song just so we could hear Jamie sing it. Um, so <laughs> Uh, we're going to move into uh, a little bit of a conversation about your journey with breast cancer. So, um, as you know, we've talked, and I've heard your story, and then I read your book. You know, so I was able to really experience your story a little bit. Your husband had some major medical issues, and then after that, you were diagnosed with breast cancer. So a lot of it was just like stacking up. Um, so why don't you share a little bit of your journey um, with that? And I mean, praise Jesus, you are, you're good, you're cancer free, and you're healthy um, and you're using your story to encourage others and it doesn't always turn out you know the same for everyone but we all have journeys of difficult things that we go through and so regardless I thought it'd be fun to fun <laughs> it'll be fun to have you share the worst oh. season of your life <laughs> but well, you know God's it faithful. always leaves a little bit of hope I, I hope which is why I share it yeah and um, what I always like to say is the principles are the same no matter the difficulty because everyone goes through or is going through or will go through something really difficult in their life. Um, back in 2011, I was uh, at home on a Friday night. Our hus my husband and I had an exciting date night, which involved Menards. 
and <laughs> sounds um, like ours. Yeah, a Dateline. <laughs> a Friday night. That's, that <laughs> oh was my our gosh. Date. Maybe a little Culver's in there too. Yeah. Uh, but we're watching TV, and I go to itch my shirt, and I feel a lump, and I think, ah, that's nothing. Felt like a marble. So I, I sat there and I pretended it wasn't there, and I kept feeling it like every five, every two minutes, you know. And I think, ah, your head's just getting ahead of you, you know. So it's Friday night, Monday morning. I went to see my doctor. She sent me to a specialist Tuesday morning. Um, and they asked, could we just do a, a ultrasound biopsy on the spot? I was like, that's a little disconcerting, but okay, I'd rather do it than come back. And that was Tuesday, Wednesday morning. I am painting furniture with my sister and sister-in-law and um, the phone rings. And I had been waiting because I had actually missed a call, if you could believe it, from the clinic, which your heart is just racing. So I sat in my car waiting for the call back. And it finally came and I answered. And the first thing the woman said on the other end was, are you driving right now? <clears throat> I knew that wasn't a good sign. And I said, nope, just waiting for your call. And she said, you know, I'm sorry to tell you, we got your test results back and you have invasive ductal carcinoma. And I said, okay. <laughs> and she said, mm, no, honey, do you understand? I'm telling you, you have breast cancer. I said, yep said, mm, would you like me to spell it for you? And I said, nope. And I'm sure she thought I was in denial, which to a degree I probably was. Yeah. You know, you're like, what is, what is even happening right now? It almost feels like an out-of-body experience. But we hung up the phone, and, and all I could think was, I can't have cancer, I have kids. I, my kids were 12, 14, 16, and 18 at the time. And like you mentioned, they had just barely recovered from their dad almost dying twice. And they've lost both grandfathers to cancer. So for them, the people in their life that got cancer, they went to heaven. And so I just kept thinking, how am I going to tell them? And to be honest, it was one of the hardest parts of the entire journey. My oldest just put his head in his hands and he sobbed and I told them, you know what, <clears throat> I'm going to do everything. We're going we're gonna to trust God. I'm going to do everything the doctors say. But I'm also going to say this. If for some reason I wasn't here, you will see me again and we are not people without hope. Because I had to have that conversation with them and then I did everything. I did the chemo and I had seven surgeries, eight rounds of chemo, I did the radiation, I did everything possible and trusted God at the same time. For me, part of my battle was, you know, trusting God and not getting in fear. And um, I think we're going to talk about that a little bit later. but. I, you know, during my first chemo appointment, I started sobbing uncontrollably and I was scared and I couldn't figure it out. My nurse is telling me this is normal. I'm just looking at her like, normal? And then they finally brought my doctor in and he said, this is totally normal. You're just having a panic attack. And I looked right at him and I go, oh no, I don't have those. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, mm, you are having one. Yeah. And I sobbed, I think, for eight hours that day without stopping. It was the weirdest feeling, but no one told me that anxiety was going to come with the cancer. I, did, I didn't know. But I will say on this side of it, the gift that I got from that anxiety was empathy because I hadn't dealt with anxiety and depression to that point. And it helped me to understand what peop many, many people face and go through. And um, so I, I, you know, I struggled with that for a couple of years, but all along the way, God did things that I call like God hugs, yeah. little things to remind me. I call them God winks. Well, God winks, yeah. same thing. Yeah, that's that's my God hug only with social distancing. Yeah, exactly. So you gotta keep <laughs> even from God. My God just winks. <laughs> uh, but it, it was a reminder. And if you look for them, I know that you'll see them. Yeah. Um, and little things he did for me that, uh, I'll share one, because there's many, but when, when I knew I was doing chemo, I told my doctor, all my chemo needs to be done before my son's football season. He's a senior this year, I will not miss a game. Football season's eight regular season games. 
and he was doing really well. Well, even if he wasn't, I didn't want to miss any of it. So all my chemo was scheduled for me to be at his first game. My last chemo was a Tuesday. I went to his first game on a Friday night. Didn't feel good, but I was there. You know, when your kids come out on the field, they're all wearing the same color. <laughs> so you got to find them. You got to spot them out there. And he lines up on the defense and I spot him. And he's wearing pink cleats and gloves in my honor. And you know, God uses people. So he used my son to remind me, I'm here, it's okay, I see you. When you're going through something hard, it can feel like, where are you, God? Where are you? Did you forget about me? But he would remind me in these little ways, I'm here and I see you, I've got you. Isn't it interesting the power our children have to encourage our hearts? Yes. Like, I don't think they realize, kids, you don't realize how much power you have to bless your mom. <laughs> No, you know, 100%. Like, and and I've, I'm on to it now. Like for a while, I didn't catch it, but I'm on to it now. So Aiden is 17. He's our youngest. Oh my gosh, he's going to be 18 next month. What is happening? <laughs> but he, if I was gone from the house, he would text me, what time are you going to be home? And, you know, I tell him and he'll, he'll just check in to see when I'm, and I realize it's because right before I get home, he cleans the kitchen up. Like he doesn't do it for the two days I've been gone or the eight hours I've been gone, but he'll clean the kitchen up right. And I'll know because the dishwasher will be running when I get home. But I'll walk in, I'll be like, oh, it's so clean. He'll be like, yo, I just got done. Because he knows how much that blesses yes. my heart. And I think when our kids, you know, just the simple things when they understand what's gonna matter to us and they speak that, it's, it's such a blessing. Um, yeah, so it, good. Yeah, it totally is. And you know, God used Carter is the one that came to me two years later, three years later, and said, Mom, you got your cancer. Let's go for the dream. And it was on his encouragement that we actually applied together the first time that I applied for the show. So he encouraged you to go for Survivor? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. You have good kids. I really do. Yeah, I do too. One of them is sitting <laughs> behind that camera. <laughs> We're so blessed by that. Um, we, uh, oh, let me just check and see. I want to make sure that I cover the things that we, oh. So this was re reminding me, um, my mother's best friend, her name was Linda Drake. Uh, Linda actually passed away from breast cancer. And she was a woman of great faith. And she was, she was one of the women that um, mommed me, you know, as, as I was a kid. Uh, she, we just, uh, her kids and my family, we were all just family. And so um, I would say we lost her several years ago, but we know where she is, so she's not lost. She's, uh, she's in heaven right now. But um, I know that Mother's Day is a difficult time for her kids. Um, and I know that Mother's Day, Mother's Day weekend it can be hard. It can be hard for those who are struggling with infertility. Um, actually, we have some miracle stories of people we've prayed over uh, you know, for them to have babies yes, um, on Mother's Day. There's at least two families in our church that on Mother's Day we got to pray over and they had a baby mm. the next year, which was super cool. Um, and then one who adopted within that Aww. year and didn't know that that was going to be God's plan. So, um, but I know that with infertility and with um, loss, those who've lost their mother or lost their children, Mother's Day can be tough. And so um, I just asked Sunday just to take a minute and pray for those whose hearts are hurting this weekend because we just want to give you, um, let you know that our hearts are with you as well. So if you could just pray for comfort and blessing and maybe a miracle or two, that would be all right. Oh yeah. yeah. I love it. Lord, we just come before you and I lift up every woman that, that is having a hard time. Lord, you know who they are, but you also sent us the Holy Spirit who's our comforter. And even beyond that, I ask you to send them an extra grace today. I ask you to bring them a revelation of your love for them, to bring them a God hug or a God wink, to show them that you see them and you see their pain and that you want to take it. But not only that, we thank you for miracles. For those that are believing for babies, we stand in agreement with them. And we thank you, God, that you are a big God. Nothing's impossible to you. Nothing is impossible for you to 
to bring blessing and nothing is impossible for you to heal a hurting and crushed heart. So we just thank you for women across the board, God, that, that you care about them, you love them, and you are holding them in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I mentioned Linda Drake, who was one of my non-moms who mommed me. Um, and I was just thinking back over my life at some of those women who maybe didn't have kids of their own or did and chose to have an influence in my life. Um, Barb Shearer from Camp Victory in Sampson, Alabama. Barb never had kids of her own, but she paid for my piano lessons when I was a kid. For years, she paid for my piano lessons. Um, so just a thank you to Barb. Uh, but we asked a few of our staff members to just share the non-moms who mommed us, or our non-moms, maybe they were moms, but who chose to mom the kids around them because, you know, we all have the opportunity to have influence in the lives of the children and young adults around us. So here's the tribute to our non-moms who mommed us. My non-mom's name was Darlene Bear, and she was actually my best friend's mom, but she became like a mom to me. I was always over there. She always made enough food for me to eat as well. Uh, I just felt like part of the family. Their names are Denise and Mary, and also their mom, who we called Grandma Cox, always loved us like we were their own kids. And we'd go over to her house and get freezies during the summer, um, hang around the yard. And they just, they had so much love to give and still have so much love to give for me and my siblings and now my own kids too. It was Alita Majeski and Lydia Butler who took me into their families when I was 1500 miles away from mine. Uh, her name is Terry Meyer and for the Harry Potter fans out there she was my Mrs. Weasley. My non-mom was Jan Nicodemus. She was my best friend's mom, and she and my mom were both single mothers. They really helped to support one another, and over the years it felt like we were one big family. I can remember going up to their house when they moved to a farm, and we would be there for a week at a time, and she treated me like one of her own kids, which meant that I also had to muck out the stalls, but it was totally worth it because she made my little girl dream come true, and she gave me a horse. When I was in high school, I struggled a lot with anxiety and depression, and I was in a very toxic relationship. I ended up getting some counseling from a lady at church who helped me see the value of my life and got me through those rough times. Her name was Sunday Burquist. That one was for you, I know. Wow. That's Kaylee. And her husband, she and her husband are starting one of our churches. Oh my gosh. And when I told her that you were gonna come here, she said, she said, Sunday's the reason I'm here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so you're one of the non-moms who mommed, apparently. She shared her story with me a little bit this week that she was just in such a bad place. Oh my gosh. And uh, her mom got your number or something and connected the two of you. And apparently you Oh my gosh. Here. Yeah. You never know, do you? No. <laughs> no, because I'll tell you, pastoring and youth, especially youth pastoring <laughs> can be a thankless job sometimes. That's true, right? But that makes every everything worth it. Wow. Yeah. That was so, so good. sweet. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, so we wanted to surprise you with oh, that. She just yes. shared it with me and I said, oh, would you be goodness. willing to put that on video? Wow. So, yeah, so we'll be able to share that with oh. everyone. Um, we're going to um, just kind of wrap up here yeah. now that I threw you off your game just yeah. a little bit. Um, but uh, when I when I asked Sunday, I'm mean, Sunday's story and the things that she is qualified and capable to teach on are vast. I mean, there's just a lot, there's a lot, she has so much to share, which is why I'm excited that we're still planning to have her come and speak for Twirl when we schedule it. Um, and we'll schedule it around her schedule. Uh, but um, I asked her if there was a particular topic or something specific that she'd like to share as we wrap up today. And what she said to me resonates with me so much. And you know, we're in a season right now where everybody is going through some kind of struggle. Mm -hmm. And even if you still have your job and your family is healthy and things are cruising along for you, the truth is we don't know what tomorrow holds. Um, everything in our world really is unstable right now. And of course we hold on to hope that God's got it and he's taking care of us. Um, but um, Sunday, I'm just gonna invite you to share what you shared with or what you mentioned to me mm -hmm. um, just about what the real 
what the real fight is and where it's fought. And we just want to kind of wrap up with some encouragement mm -hmm. in that area. Well, what we talked about right before this was back to kind of my breast cancer story, but I, I was nervous going through cancer that I wasn't going to do faith right. Anyone ever worry about that? Like, I'm not going to say the right words or go to church enough or read my Bible enough. And I was dealing with these thoughts. You know, when you go to bed at night, you, your brain is going in the thoughts. Yeah. And I, I distinctly remember, I feel like the Holy Spirit speaks to me the way I talk because then I hear him and I understand him. And so he said, and I just heard in my heart him say like, well, let's just say that you read your Bible more than you ever do. And you go to church more than you ever go to church. And you say everything perfectly. And I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then he says, are you earning healing from me? Are you earning something from me? And I was like, ooh, no. Just like salvation, everything we got from Jesus at the cross was a free gift. Yeah. So I realized that I was trying to strive and earn. And then I realized that the Bible says that the, to fight the good fight of faith. But Jesus already fought the actual fight. So what's my fight? My fight is to rest. Yes. My fight is to trust because we are wired, especially women and moms, mm -hmm. to do, 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 fix, fix, fix. I got to do A, B, C, D or, or something won't happen. Right. And we're, it's harder for us to rest. And the fight is really in our minds because it, especially when I found when I went to bed at night or I had downtime is when tick, 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 but this, but this, but this, you don't feel this, oh, you feel this, oh, this happened, this stat says this. I mean, one of the first lessons I learned was get off Google. Oh my gosh, right? Get off yeah. Google. And um, I learned that my fight was rest. But even in that, there's there's things that, that we're told in the word that help, like laughter is a medicine. I actually had a doctor prescribe to me that I needed to belly laugh three times a day. Wow. So instead of reading your Bible all day, you need to watch something funny on TV. <laughs> Just go to YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I watched Everybody Loves Raymond because it was my favorite show and it made me laugh so hard. And other things that helped me was when I was in bed at night and fear tried to come in, I would sing worship songs out loud mm -hmm. until I fell asleep because I couldn't sing and think something else at the same time. Yes. Yeah, what's coming out your mouth supersedes everything in your yes. head. Yes, mm -hmm. so I would sing to myself, bad, an off key, by the way, my poor <laughs> husband, but doesn't matter. And I would have scriptures, you know, playing just to go into my heart. And But I really realized that the fight was just to rest and trust. Mm -hmm. And we want to get, get, get. But but God is sitting right there. He's like, I, I did it, just, just trust me. Yeah. It's not always easy. Things aren't going to go great just because we trust God. Yeah. However, we're promised He's never going to leave us and forsake us. Right. I love the scripture, um, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Oh, I have that on the wall at the farm. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. I think we look at everything outside as these are the battles we're fighting. Mm -hmm. It's breast cancer. It's fighting you know, the opponents on Survivor. Yes. It's uh, it's the economy, it's COVID, it's sanity, yeah. <laughs> you know, with yeah. kids. We say all of those, we say, well, this is my battle, this is my fight, but really it's all in here. It is the enemy wants to capture our minds and just send us down the wrong path. And then we just, yeah. So. Yeah, because if you think about the opposite of that is the fruit of the spirit. Yes. Love, joy, Love, peace. joy, peace, yes. patience. And, and that's really what separates a person who puts their trust in Jesus mm -hmm. is that in the middle of the storm mm -hmm. doesn't make sense. Yeah. Why do I have peace? Why am I calm? Why are you calm while you have breast cancer? Yeah. I don't know, but I'm just trying to put my trust in God and that's that anchor of your soul. Yes. You know. Well, and scripture says don't worry about anything. Instead, you know, pray about everything. And, yes. and, and then it says that the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Yes. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, like I like to call it like crazy peace, crazy mm -hmm. peace, where other people look at you and say, how are you not losing it right now? Exactly. You know, because look at your life. <laughs> yes. If I were you, I don't yeah. want to be you. Right. Yeah. And I would think that's, you know, that's, it's crazy peace. It's a supernatural peace. It's not something we can work up or do enough yoga or meditation to achieve that. Right. It is the peace that only the spirit of God brings. 
And so as we wrap up today, I think this is probably a, a good, I don't even know how long this is, and I don't care. <laughs> um, but I think it's, it's lovely to hear these stories. It's love, isn't it great to see the joy on her face and to see how God has taken her through so much? Um, and we say what God has for us, and he has this peace, and he has love, and he has joy, and he has this, you know, we can trust in him. But we only get that if we've chosen to give our lives to him. Mm -hmm. Like we can't jump in and get an inheritance from a family we don't belong to. Um, but, but because of what Jesus did for us, we can at any point just say, yes, I want to be in that family, and we can just receive that. Mm -hmm. And we can step into the family of God and receive that peace that, that he has for us and his spirit in us, guiding us and helping us to stay strong in the middle of an uncertain world, in the middle of craziness, in the middle of whatever uh, fights come our way. Um, so as we wrap up today, this is what I want for you most of all. First of all, if you've been a believer for a while and maybe your faith has been a little shaken because of the world, just know God has not fallen off his throne. <laughs> He's not, he didn't call an emergency meeting with his people when COVID hit. Um, he's still securely planted in charge of the universe. And yes, there's a lot of darkness at work, but God is so much stronger. He's got all the power and it is our job simply uh, to trust. So maybe return to that today, return back to who he is and who you are in his family. But if you have never given your life to Christ and you're struggling to get through this season and whatever you're facing in your own power and you know reading all the blogs and you know, yeah. following and all the things, why don't you just close everything out and in this moment do what we call just step across the line of faith. There's a line and it's a choice to believe that Jesus gave his life for you so that you could be in the family of God without any guilt or shame so the Spirit of God can live in you and empower you to live out the life that God has for you and to stay strong in difficult times. Would you choose to just step across that line and say, I'm all in. So if that's you, I'm just gonna invite you to repeat after me and it, it doesn't matter if you're sitting in your car somewhere or if you're a mom and you're hiding in the bathroom from your family or, <laughs> or wherever you are right now, but you can just say, Jesus Christ, thank you for what you did for me on the cross. I choose to receive your forgiveness for where I've gone wrong. I choose to give my life to you. Take me into the family of God. Holy Spirit, come into my life. Lead me. Give me the peace and the joy that only you can bring. My life is yours. Amen. You know, we believe that if you prayed a prayer like that, and you meant it from your heart, that you became uh, one of God's kids. And so can you please just go into the chat or into the comments of wherever you're watching this right now and just say, I did that. I gave my life to Jesus today. Um, if you don't want to do that, then just email us prayer at freegrace.tv, prayer at freegrace.tv, and let us know. Um, we are so happy for you. Welcome to the family of God. Mm -hmm. Sunday, thank you so much for sharing your story and oh. for being here with me. I've been socially distancing and very lonely, so I'm glad that you... <laughs> I know, me too. This was, know. It was so fun. Thank you for asking. <laughs> yes, it was, it was a pleasure having you. Mm. So God bless you guys, and I hope you have a fantastic week. Thank you so much, Pastor Kelly and Sunday, for that message. That was the exact encouragement that I needed today to get through the rest of this week. Shout out to all my fellow moms out there. Happy Mother's Day to you, and I really hope that your family spoils you rotten today, and I really hope that my family spoils me rotten today, too. Uh, if you have a special mom in your life and you want to nominate her to win that fabulous gift box in the mail, you can still do that. All you have to do is text mom nom M-O-M-N-O-M, Mom Nom, as in nominate a mom, to 24587. She'll be entered into a drawing to win that fabulous gift box. It'll be delivered right to her house. It's going to be so cool. What a cool surprise that'll be. Uh, next weekend, I want to invite you back because Pastor Eric's going to be continuing the teaching from our Resilient series. So we're still going through the book of James together. We're talking about how to get through trials with unshakable faith. So I want to invite you back next weekend for Church Online. Uh, we'll meet you right here at the same time, same place. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that every time we get together for worship, we always leave with a blessing. So I want to invite you to say it with me. Ready? Psalm 67, 1 and 2. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us that his ways may be known on earth and his saving power among all nations. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next time.